Bowers Armada had completed the Atlantic crossing in 48 hours flying time, flying a total of 6,065 miles in close formation. The Armada assembled at Shoal Harbor, Newfoundland, to begin the homeward journey. They were once more held up by the Atlantic weather. Balbo had originally planned to return via Ireland and to visit the French Air Force, who had invited the Armada to make a stop in France. Now, the persistence of the Atlantic storms led him to choose a more southerly route, taking in the Azores. Even so, it was not until the 8th of August that all was ready for the departure. The return was marred by tragedy when one of the aircraft crashed on takeoff from San Miguel Island, killing its crew. The remainder of the Armada reached Lisbon in Portugal that evening in somber mood. Nothing, however, would have prevented the ecstatic reception that awaited Balbo and his crews when they arrived at Ostia, the ancient port of Rome. as ambassador of the 10-year-old Regia Aeronautica, had led the Air Armada in a feat of flying which few other air forces in the world at that time could have accomplished. He had put Italy's air force firmly on the international stage. After a triumphal march through the streets of Rome, Balbo was made the first Marshal of the Italian Air Force. But it was not only in the field of long distance flight that Italian design was to lead the world. The Schneider Trophy symbol of a rivalry between Italian, British and American designers that produced some of the most outstanding aeroplanes ever flown. Initiated by Jacques Schneider in 1913, the Schneider Trophy would be awarded to the winner in an annual contest open to hydroplanes of all nations. In 1919, a series of advanced Italian aircraft were entered. In 1920 and 1921, the Italian teams triumphed. In 1927, the Italian entry was the sleek Mackie M39 monoplane, a design that looked forward to the aircraft of the next decade. The Americans answered this with the Curtis R3C2, a development of the airplane that Jimmy Doolittle had flown to victory in the previous year's contest. The Italian team had good reason to feel confident in the abilities of the Mackie machines. The three pilots, Mario De Bernardi, the team captain, Arturo Ferrarini, and Adriana Bacula, were flying one of the most advanced aeroplanes in the world.
British planes were not ready in time for the contest. And so the 1926 Schneider race became a duel between the Italians and the Americans. This duel was not without incident. Towards the end of the seven lap race, the 800 horsepower Fiat engine in Mario De Bernardi's Maki began to overheat drastically. And he and the American George Cudahy were racing neck and neck on the final lap when the Curtis suffered an engine failure. And Bernardi went on to take the trophy with an average speed of 246.3 miles per hour. As winners, Italy hosted the next challenge in 1927 at Venice. Mackey's experience with the M39 led to the development of a new Challenger, the Mackey M52. Powered by a new engine, the powerful 1,000 horsepower Fiat AS3, the aeroplane promised much. Unfortunately, teething troubles with the engine were to mar Italy's attempt to retain the trophy. As always, the Schneider competitions attracted observers and aviators from all over the world. In the interwar years, they provided a valuable opportunity for pioneers of all nations to meet and to exchange ideas and experiences. Aero Club d'Italia had redesigned the course this year around a circuit of 27 nautical miles, which allowed the competing aircraft to cross the start line in the air for the first time. It was to be Mackey's arch rival, Supermarine, who would shine at Venice. The S5, another in the line of designs by Reginald Mitchell, showed its kinship with the Italian Mackey in its sleek lines. Powered by an 875 horsepower Rolls-Royce engine, the S5 completed the course with an average speed of 281.65 miles per hour, a new world record for both land and seaplanes. During the contest, the crowds watched with dismay as the brilliant red Mackies were forced to retire one by one with engine problems. However, these problems were quickly corrected, and in November of 1927, Mario de Bernardi demonstrated the Mach 52's potential by flying it to a new world speed record of 299 miles per hour. It was decided to postpone the next challenge for two years to allow time for the teams to develop new aircraft. And so it was that the Isle of Wight in the United Kingdom hosted the next race in 1929. This year saw the Mackie 52s and the new Mackie M67 competing against the Supermarine S6. Again, engine problems plagued both teams, and the British planes needed an emergency engine replacement the night before the race. Supermarines once again took the trophy. Flying Officer Waghorn completing the course with an average speed of 328 miles per hour.
For the concert of 1931, Mackie worked feverishly to make ready a revolutionary new aircraft. The Mackie 72 was powered by two engines working in tandem and driving two contra-rotating propellers. This piece of innovative design solved several problems in one move. It enabled an increase in horsepower, whilst making the frontal area of the engine smaller, which allowed the use of smaller, tougher propeller blades. During its trials in Italy, the Marquis performed well, but the advanced design brought with it many new problems, and it was soon apparent that this worthy challenger to the S6B of Supermarine would not be ready in time for the race. But it was not the end of record breaking for Marquis. In 1933, Francesco Agello flew the Marquis 72 to a top speed of 426 miles per hour, a new world record. The following year, Agello once again flew the Mackie to a new world record of 443 miles per hour, fully justifying the revolutionary design that had taken so long to realize its true potential. <laughs> 